as James mentioned, so my name's Tash. I lead our global customer success team at SalesLoft. If you haven't heard of SalesLoft before, we're a revenue workflow platform. So we leverage insights from all across your tech stack to basically prioritize your rep's workflow. The idea being that any revenue generating team knows that they're spending their time on the right things and taking the, the best next steps towards good outcomes. So um, increasing rep active selling time is definitely in our wheelhouse. And so Rob was going to talk today about his personal leadership journey, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think there is always room for us to grow as leaders, and I'm personally always interested in hearing other people's stories. So hopefully there's some good nuggets in here for, for some of you today. And as James mentioned, I'm really going to focus in on three key things that are lessons I've learned along the way that have helped shape and define the leader that I am today at SalesLoft. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is um, that for me, like the way that I think about great leadership, it really boils down to being a really good person always and trusting your instincts in doing so. Now, that might sound incredibly simple, but let me give you some context as to my story. When I first had started out as a manager, I was like desperately hunting for the perfect formula or the perfect end-to-end -end playbook of how to be a really great manager. And what happened was I was approaching scenarios with far too much rigidity. They say this, you do this. When X happens, you do Y. And this is how I become a really great leader. And basically, I was just trying far too hard to fit everything into a nice, neat little manager's box. Now, that probably says a lot about me as a human, to be honest, but I'm happy to be open and vulnerable on this today. But to be honest, like I've always had a real like process driven and logical mind. And so it was genuinely something that I really struggled with. And so I very quickly realized that that as an approach wasn't working. Life isn't like that. When X happens, do Y. And leading isn't like that either. And so by focusing way too much on, well, what does the management playbook say I have to do in this scenario? I was lacking a human element and I was lacking a lot of empathy, authenticity to myself and like certainly a vulnerability in my leadership style. Now, what I'm not saying is that nobody has to go do training sessions on how to be a great leader and nobody should read books and nobody should be continuously improving because like I absolutely believe that you should do all of those things. But what I learned really quickly was to be the best leader I could be, I had to start getting comfortable in the gray and that I wouldn't always know what the best next step is and the best answer. But as somebody who, you know, as I've said, really likes process and really likes logic, that was tricky for me. And so I started like most leaders did and I boiled all of my like training and learning and reading into my core leadership principles. But actually what I realized is that most of that just comes down to being a really good human. Like the rest of the key principles of great leadership, they just follow naturally. And actually, if in every scenario, I'm just trying really hard to be a good person and do the right thing, the rest of the guiding under like guiding principles that I use will follow on. So like, hey, what do I do in this scenario? Actually, I can just apply being a good human to most of them. And even when you think about the most difficult things about being a great leader, having difficult conversations, giving critical, critical feedback, performance management, all of this is just based on clarity, on fairness, on clear expectations. It's all part and parcel of just being a good human at all times. Nobody's ever going to be a perfect leader, but I think if you're trying to be a good person all the time and you naturally have good intentions, you're striving for the best outcome, you're constantly trying to improve, like, hey, that gives you everything that you need to along the way. So that was really an eye opener for me. So the first thing was, hey, stop focusing on what does the management playbook said? And instead, just focus on trusting myself to be a good person and focus on the right outcome. The second thing that I want to talk, to, uh, talk about today is more so as I evolved on my leadership style. I was working on my empathy. I was working on being more human and gaining confidence in being a leader. The next thing that I called myself out for doing was being way too protective of my team. And it's a natural thing to do, right? You want to do right by your people. You want to look after your team. You want to be a great leader. But what that had turned into was me saying no, like quite often to most of the people internally. And oftentimes furiously defending my team when it probably wasn't necessary. And I was probably caught in a few battles with some sales leaders along the way, if I'm, if I'm honest with myself. And I realized that I was creating a brand for myself that 
I didn't actually want. And I wasn't really working in the best interests of the company, but only in the best interests of my team. And I actually had some really great advice on this um, only six months ago that I wish I'd had back then. And that was that every leader should focus on company first and then team and then self. And actually, when you think about it, not only does this help your company overall to have that kind of mindset, but it helps you in your career. It helps your brand, and it certainly did mine. But it also helps your team feel a lot more connected to the company mission and the company vision. The team feel like they know that they're a part of what the company is trying to do. And actually, when I think about it, like helping people compare what they're doing to broader company objectives It's a huge part of being a CSN. So I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier. But you can do that in any role, whether you're a leader or an individual contributor, if you're an SDR, an AE, if you're a sales leader, if you're in marketing, if you're in CS, everybody needs to focus on how they link to the company objectives and how they can operate with a company first mindset or in the company's best interest. So that was the second thing for me, starting to force myself as a leader to think company first, then team, then self really helped me grow into the leader that I am today. And then the third thing that I'm going to talk about is the type of leader that I decided I want to be. It stuck with me as I've moved from leading one team to two teams to now a global CS org. I spent a lot of time figuring out, okay, what's the kind of leader I want to be? What do I want my management style to be? Where do I want to focus? And I realized that I noticed people tend to gravitate into one of two buckets. They're either really great people leaders or they're really great business leaders. And right now, like I'm challenging myself to try and be both. And I haven't nailed it. Like I can tell you that, but I'm trying. Like a great people leader to me is really good at coaching, gives really open and honest and constructive feedback, recognizes and shouts out their team builds culture, builds security into people's roles and how they feel at work. A really great business leader is focused on metrics and accountability. They review their business like it's their own business and they put the right plans in place to try and improve that business. And as I noticed that people tend to gravitate into one of two camps and I started to challenge myself to focus on both, I reviewed, okay, well, where do I naturally feel comfortable? Where do my natural tendencies lie? And actually that's helping me figure out where I need to focus on my development as a leader and where I need to catch myself out and see where my blind spots are and think about how I get more balance across both of those two. So that's for me, a little brief intro into my leadership journey and the three nuggets that really have stuck with me. So the first one is always trying hard to be a good human. Don't overthink the playbook. Just trust your instincts to be a really good person along the way. The second piece was thinking company, then team, then self. And the third piece is thinking about the kind of leader you want to be. Do you want to be a great people leader? Do you want to be a great business leader? Or do you want to challenge yourself to do both? And so they're my three nuggets. Hopefully there's something interesting and helpful for you there.